So, I was walking the other day. Somebody told me I sounded like a jailer. This is weird. It's like a whole bunch of thrown away flowers propped up against this building. It's a weird way to honor somebody. But I guess whatever. I sound like a jailer. There's a I don't know. There's like a lot and there's like a, a nothing going on in the world right now. And I mean, we don't have to be so um, what's the word? So fickle or so, you know, um, we don't have to be so entertained all the time, you know, like, I don't know. I like, I see things in the world that are done wrong, but you know, I'm sure somebody's watching me being like, ah, that guy's such a fucking loser. That guy's a fucking dumbass. He's doing it all wrong. I guess it, it all comes down to the subjective form of, um, so I'm uh, putting you behind my ear here for a second while I cross the street. But it's all subjective. Um, because, you know, not everybody has the same goals. I, t- I told you all this. I'm not one of those people that likes to pound my opinions into you. I mean, I guess I am because I do this at all. But, um, I'm, I'm, you know, I'll I'll say it like this. Like, I I tell my kid this all the time. I don't care what you do. If, if I take the time to fucking give you some advice, then I give a shit. It doesn't mean that I'm telling you how to do your shit. It doesn't mean that I'm trying to tell you what your next move should be. I'm just making suggestions based on my fucking knowledge. I had one of my friends say to me one time, why would I do what you tell me to do uh, whenever you're, you failed? And, uh, like, why would I tell you, why would I tell you to do what I did in failure? You know what I'm saying? Why would the advice, who gives the advice, like, you know what I did? I mean, I guess there is those people. Those are like waiting room people. Those are people that can't start a sentence with, I wouldn't do this. But instead they start it with, you know what I did or what I would do. And it's in it's not the opposite of what they did to fail. I guess. That's who gives that kind of advice. I have this hole in my pocket. So everything has to be in one pocket on one side of my body. And so my pants just slowly start to sag on one side. It's not an even sag. So eventually I start looking like Igor. Igor. Igor is from Young Frankenstein. But you got... Ah, fuck. 
This guy is like the lowest impact leaf blower guy I've ever seen. He's moving everything like two feet at a time. Does he know that that thing can turn up? You can turn that thing up, bro. I shouldn't be able to talk on a fucking podcast as I'm walking by a leaf blower. But that shit was on like low impact. <laughs> so, I, I made this post and only one person cared enough to fucking answer. And that's cool. Maybe that's maybe that's the only person I have anymore for a fan is my friend Tony. You know? And I like having friends as fans. I like having fans as friends. I was saying it the other day to somebody like I think I I was actually telling you guys, like, you know, I don't have, like, a fear of getting fired at my job. I mean, if if I get fired, I get fired. I'm not trying to do shit to get fired, though. But if I, if somebody's like, dude, we deem that fire worthy, then I'm just like, ugh, that sucks. I mean, if I got into a car accident or if I stab somebody... You know, I expect to get fired if it's really bad. But if I get hella hurt in a car accident and it isn't even my fault, and I don't have the support of my boss, I will probably, you know, I'll probably do something mean. But I don't like to do mean stuff. So anyway, I was explaining to these guys. I was like, you know, like I don't fear write-ups. I don't fear getting fired. I don't give. I don't give a shit about that. Like, I work for my friend, and so I'm trying to make you our friend. We're trying to be friends. So if if you're not my friend because I did something that got you in trouble. Or if I'm if you're not my friend because I did something that irritated you, like you gotta fucking say something. Cause I wanna be your friend. And honestly, like I don't even fucking like people. But like my retail face is just being friends with people. You know what I mean? Like I don't know. It just seems like there's, uh, like the, there's like a weird, like I, okay, back in the MySpace days, like I, uh, I didn't even know what a fucking hater was. You know what I mean? Like, um, I didn't even know what a fucking hater was. Like I, I just. I, that was that word wasn't even in my vocabulary back in the MySpace days. Um, but then somebody brought it to my attention. They're like, "Dude, the Modesto B is talking mad shit about you, saying that you were a drunk, slurry performance, and you were the raunchiest performance of the evening." And I was like, "Wow." I said I sang Ario Speedwagon parody Keep on humping you and that's raunchy I didn't <laughs> you know What is that song about to you I mean I you know the, at the time my daughter was like I don't know math but she was young and I actually asked her, I was like, what do, whenever you see an animal having sex with another animal, what do you and your friends say? 
because I couldn't think of the word humping. And my daughter laughed at me and she was like, humping? That's humping, Dad. <laughs> and I was like, ah, oh, shit. I've been saying fuck for so long that the word hump isn't even in my vocabulary. You know what I'm saying? I gotta ask a, a child to help me. I, I, I'm gonna have to do some math. I, I wonder how old my kid was. Sometimes when I tell the story, I say she's five. Sometimes I say she's eight. I know she was, she had to have been under 10. Uh, if somebody wants to message me, there's a little chat box on this thing. It only works whenever the show's live, and if you're not listening right now, like while it's live, if it doesn't say fucking live, then you can't message me. But you could private message me on Instagram at Original Buck Stallion. Or you can message the office at Wake and Bake Podcast. And there's it's not and, it's an N. W-A-K-E-N-B-A-K-E-P-O-D-C-A-S-T. We're going to stop for just a moment. For me to put my hand down the front of my pants and tug my balls. Woo! Oh, I feel good. Anyways, so... Oh, I had this one time. I gotta tell you. Okay, this is totally random. Oh, but anyways, uh, I'll tell you about that that later. Um, let's get back to the fucking thing. So my daughter is twenty. So you do the math. Um, she told me in two thousand. Seven, seven, eight, nine, seven, eight, nine, ten. So it'd be 2008 is whenever I performed at the Gallo Art Theater or Gallo Art fucking whoop de woo. Um, so I'm thinking that's when it was, anyways. Uh, I got nominated three years in a row, and I won 2010. So 2008, let me see, I'll just fucking try and figure it out right now in front of you. Real-time math with Buck Stallion. Um, Okay, she's 20 now, we'll just say it's 2020. So yeah, she was like 10. She was like 10... Nine, eight. She was like eight. So, she was like seven. Born in 99. Anyways. So, so I sang, uh, the lyrics go like this. It goes, um, uh, oh, and I sang it to like a 18 year old girl. Um, and, th- and apparently she was like the lawyer's daughter and shit. I like, I was going to sing it to somebody in the audience. Um, but they told me not to, they told me to sing it to the awards girl. And so I did. And, uh, and it goes, um. Oh shit, I can't even think of how it goes. Hey, and I meant every word I said. When I said that I love you, I meant I wanna hump you forever. And I'm gonna keep on humping you. Cause you're the only thing I wanna do. I don't want to sleep. I just want to keep on humping you. Right? And then we ended it with, I want to hump you hard. Hard. Like, and we did that like 15 times. I want to hump you hard. Hard. 
hard. Hard. And there's a picture of me on my knees singing to the girl, and she's blushing. I don't know. Everything seemed to go as planned until the newspaper came out with it. And then they were fucking hating and calling me raunchy and slurry. And, uh, so, okay, so that's what I am. I guess, if that's what the newspaper says, right? But see, we also didn't have fake news in 2010. Or 2008. There was no such thing as fake news. And there was no such thing as haters. But, the person hating, writing fake news, was from a panel called... ModestoFamous.com and it was an editorial by this fucking fake ass fuck named Ruben Porras that's P-O-R-R-A-S you can go look up his articles if he even exists I know that he still writes for the Modesto View which is um, like a poser hipster mag I used to be in all the time. And, you know, I even wrote an article once. And, uh, I was told it was too dark. <laughs> and I'm like, well, then why, what, the, what the fuck you think? Like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. It always amazes me how people um, think they know you. You think that they know you, and then they ask you to do something for them, and then they're like mad at you, because you did what you do. I'll give you an example. Uh, This funeral thing that I did last Halloween um, at Franklin and Downs, shout out to Christy IU, she uh, apparently is part of the straight pride movement. I guess it got canceled because of gay violence. But uh, <laughs> but city councilwoman Christy IU apparently has like this illegitimate gay child. It's a, it's a whole scandal thing. I don't know. <sighs> but we did my funeral there. And, uh, but like a couple weeks before the funeral, um, one of the advertising marketer salespeople from the Modesto View had asked me to do this car show. And I had done the car show before, and they didn't like me. <laughs> uh, because I picked, I was just like a guest. And I, like, performed, like, maybe two songs, I think. I don't remember if I even performed at all. But, you know, um, I was, like, a Mama Award-winning comedian. And so I picked a car, and I picked the car that wasn't in any of the car clubs. It was just a guy that bought somebody else's car club car and did a few things to it, but not a lot of things. And so all these other guys that are, like, constantly working on their car, and they're, like, in car clubs and shit... They were all mad because I broke the political fucking uh, norm. I I broke their political fucking, um, yeah, just, you know, I I changed the rules because I, I, I based it on the niceness of a car without any back history or, or even care of what their fucking shit fuck was, but, um, so, I picked the wrong car, so everybody hated me, I didn't want to go back anyways, so I was just like, whatever, be mad, you know, but, um, but then this promoter, he's not a promoter, let's be honest, he's a salesman, and, yeah, whatever, He's a fuck face is what he is, but he's just like, and, uh, 
I'm not going to say his name because he knows who he is, but uh, but I'm going to do his voice for those of you that know. I mean, come on, Jay. I just want you to do your Jay Smith show. Just why, why can't you just do the Jay Smith show? I mean, come on. Come on, Jay. Just do your Jay Smith. Why, why aren't you just doing the Jay Smith? So anyways, here's the thing. I'm like, what time is this at? And he's And he gets all fucking sideways on me. And he's like, if you're not, because I'm like, you know, am I providing the audio or whatever? And he's like, no, they'll have an audio system there. And I'm like, okay. And then, uh, but I don't ever trust anybody else's audio system because if somebody's audio system is shit, then it makes me look like shit. And so I'm like, "Eh, I'll bring my own system, you know, as a backup. But, um, but so he, he, has me, so he, he says something like, if you're not there, it's at five o'clock, and if you're not there at five o'clock, it starts with or without you, if you can't be there at five, don't bother coming, like, some shit like that, like, like some little brother fucking, I want to punch you in the fucking face attitude shit, and, um, so, I fucking, I, I show up, I show up nice and dressed up even, and, uh, fucking, I set my shit up, and everybody's fucking just not being helpful, and then the promoter goes, all right, well, I have to go change, and it's like, why do you have to go change? You're here, now you're gonna go five blocks out of, out, you know, into another neighborhood to your house, to go change and have a sip of booze, probably. <laughs> so whatever, fucking loser. So, so he takes off. Well, so now I have nobody to. Um, I have nobody to fucking like vouch for me or buffer for me. So I start singing uh, this song. Oh my god! Oh, because it was it was a trunk or treat show, obviously, because it was like two weeks before Halloween, and so all the classic car guys were supposed to have candy in their trunk, and the kids come around to the trunks, and they don't get thrown in; they just get some candy out. And so, I did a funny fucking version of "Knocking on Heaven's Door" by Guns N' Roses. And I did knocking on strangers' doors. And I did, uh, I was gonna, there was another song I was gonna do that was like, I was gonna do it fairly, I was gonna do it straight. I was gonna, the thing was, is like, so it's like, the, the fucking place where he had the car show is like a weird family restaurant, 1950s wannabe fucking um, car hop but they don't have car hop. It's just, it's like a 50s style diner, but everybody just wears fucking um, home D or uh, blockbuster polos. You know what I mean? Like, it's not very, like, nobody's doing pin curls. Nobody's, like, wearing, like, poodle skirts or anything. They're just fucking, fucking the Costco, I love you. You know, fucking dipshits. So it's like, it used to be a Mel's Diner, and now it's just trash. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so apparently I'm right next to the biggest sponsor of the fucking Trunk or Treat, and I forget what song it was, it was, oh, it was Stand By Me. I started with Stand By Me, because to me... That was like a good warm-up song for me, because it starts off slow and low, and then it builds up to where it's like screaming, Jay Hawkins style, almost. I mean, at least for me. And uh, and this kid comes up and he's like, "You suck," 
And I'm like, okay, so either this kid has no, you know, fucking upbringing uh, and manners or somebody else put him up to that, some adult, and uh, yes, so um, Okay. So, yeah. So fucking... <clears throat> he's yelling, you suck at me. And I sing, keep this kid away from me. Instead of stand by me. Keep this kid away from me. And I go into like punk rock. Um, you know, fucking Henry Rollins. Uh, yelling like Black Flag style. And, uh, and then, and then the promoter comes back and he's like, what's going on? And then the owner of the club or the owner of the venue says, well, if I, cause I said something about like, get this kid away. Cause I'm about to go 1976 on him. And yes, I will spank your kid. And, uh, so I fucking, I told him. I told the owner, you know, man, I was only joking whenever I said I'd go 1976 on the kid. And, uh, he's like, if I heard you say that, I would have fucking punched you myself. I'm like, all right. No, you wouldn't have. Barney Rebel. You ain't punching shit. <sighs> Dad. I think I need to wash my hat again. So what was I going to say before? Oh, yeah, I had this girlfriend break up with me because she said every time that I talked to a pretty girl, I had to look away and pinch my and twist my balls. Find you. I don't need. 
no dope. When you walk, it's like you move in slow mo. There is the one thing I've changed about you. It's impossible to sleep, man. I'm not around you. I'm so damn lucky, girl, that I found you. Can't wait to get you home. I straight up found you. I love to surround you. Like a beast one. Never gonna be the yep, girl. You've been one. My heart has been born. Up and past lanes. I wanna take you out and girl, just do things. Like the movies. I like your boobies. I wanna buy your diamonds and pearls and boobies. Girl, I'm playing, but I'm just saying that you're hotter than a plate of fresh good baby. You make the world a better place to be a girl. I'm lucky just to have you right here next to me. And I love you. I don't need sleeping around. Oh, <laughs>